I was intrigued that there's no portrait or photograph of Margaret Rebecca Dickinson and hardly any information about her as a woman, her view of the world or her personal preferences. My poem tries to summon her through her botanical field trip to Lindisfarne in 1874. Towards the end, there's a reference to the ossuary in St. Aidan's Church in Bamburgh on the mainland, which contains the bones of the anonymous dead from nearly one and a half thousand years ago. Amongst other things, the poem's asking, how could we know another person when they're alive? And how might we remember them when they are dead? However much it loves history, a poem is not an interpretation panel in a frame. There are many things it cannot do in a time at odds with itself. Gather up, as she did, field garlic, brookweed, sea campion, beaked parsley, water plantain, knotted trefoil, tufted century. Pluck them where they hide on wind or dune to take home. Imagine crossing the sea-soaked causeway in a horse-drawn carriage. Then paint, purple and white, pink and yellow, the common language of green. Not scented or seductive, each one's a modest plant at risk from slipshod steps or simple disregard. Conjure the woman in a watercolour mirror of flowers as tenderly as if from her own bones sealed in a box. Her secrets, thank God, encrypted. Heed the silence, most eloquent against the tide.